industrialist servant salesman mother whore insane impossible ugly stupid fundamentalist terrorist odd isn't it labels are supposed to provide distinction and instead they succeed spectacularly in creating division the brown girl the indian girl the muslim girl these were some labels that i lived with when i left home at 17 to go to university suddenly what i was was just not descriptive enough suddenly i had to be held as more i had to be a nation of a billion people i had to represent a faith of billions more i i didn't like that responsibility it wasn't mine to bear so i did the easy thing i laughed it off right uh, one thanksgiving i was visiting my roommate's parents and when they met me they said ah, we were so relieved when we first met you you're so normal you're not like other muslims obviously i was taken aback at first and then i gathered my wits and i laughed and i said ha huh, i've just left my ak47 and my burqa in my other bag like i said it was just easier right and that was my first lesson i didn't like being labeled but i could laugh it off all right so i was walking uh, down the street one day i was going to meet a friend and it was a brightly lit street right it was it was safe i'd walked down it 100 times and my friend was coming towards me he was one of my closest friends actually he was the human equivalent of a puppy right uh, he was african he was from ethiopia he was black and as he walked towards me i saw a girl stop suddenly and cross the road she was getting away from him and at first i was so angry to see this blatant display of discrimination and then i felt sick to my stomach because i realized that i've been guilty of doing the same thing i have crossed the road to get away from people that look a certain way or that dress a certain way clearly i was judge i was jury i was a labeler and i was disgusted at myself for it and that was my second lesson i didn't like being a labeler and then one day some people flew planes into the world trade center in new york killing hundreds that was 911 right and suddenly i found that i couldn't laugh my labels off anymore not when my devastated classmates were asking me anisa you're muslim tell us why your people do this my people whoever they may be don't do this i wanted to scream but i couldn't because i wasn't sure are, are my people doing this who were my people did i even want to be muslim at a time when this was the definition of muslim what did it mean for me to be muslim what did it mean for me to be brown what did i connect with suddenly being a computer science student didn't help anymore i needed to understand the world better and that was my third lesson sometimes i will be labeled and i must represent but to do that i had to learn more so i changed my major i began studying the social sciences right international relations comparative re religions um islamic studies and in this time i learned all of those big dynamics right um the west versus the rest islam versus christianity the clash of civilizations the challenges of globalization it was overwhelming to say the least how do you deal with these massive intangible dynamics how do you overcome difference when people just reach for a warhead every time conflict arises so eventually i stumbled into the field of peace building where i worked for several years i was with an organization that worked to resolve conflict right so i worked in the us in foreign policy to end the war in iraq and i worked in asia in the field for a while and in asia we had a peace building conference So a peace building conference was where we brought in peace builders from across Asia, right, to come together to dialogue. So they came from conflict-ridden countries, and I love peace builders, right? They are so optimistic. These guys 
they have hope for the world, right? It's so, it's infectious. And I met this one guy who was exactly that, right? He's a little guy. He had a permanent smile on his face, okay? And just so easy to talk to. We talked about everything under the sun. And then at one point, I mustered up the courage to ask him a question that had been banging around in my head for a while. He came from East Timor, which was a country that had been embroiled in a violent uh, struggle for freedom, for independence. And I asked him, I said, you come from so much violence. How are you so positive? And he told me his story. He was on a bus, just traveling, and he struck up conversation with the guy sitting next to him. And uh, they immediately bonded, you know, they talked about philosophy and poetry and life. And at the end of the journey, he realized that the guy sitting next to him was the enemy. If he had labeled this guy up front, if he had known, he would never have sat next to him. He would never have talked to him. In fact, he would have killed him. He actually would have because he was at that time the leader of a violent youth terrorist organization and he was responsible for the killing of the people of the guy sitting next to him on that bus. My gentle smiling friend who I'd been pouring my heart to was a terrorist. And in that one conversation, when he confronted an enemy and found a friend, when he reached for a human connection instead of a label and a gun, that's when he became human. He gave up arms and he became a peace builder. And that's what peace building is. It's simply the opportunity to create dialogue, right? This is one simple tool, the answer to the massive clash of civilization issue. If you look under the hood, you can replace the fear and ignorance of others with hope. And that was my next lesson that there must be communication, dialogue is the answer. Now, it's hard not to label, right? Because when you see someone, apparently you form a first impression within a tenth of a second, right? You probably judge me before I'd even gotten to the mic, and that's fine. The point is that while you can't not label, you can decide what you want to do with your label, right? You have a choice. You can stop and think and correct yourself. You can shake prejudice out and open your mind. And exercise of choice comes from practice. So instead of walking away the next time you see someone different from you that you don't understand, instead of crossing the street, walk towards them. Have a conversation. Seek people who are different and talk to them. That's why I travel so much. That's why I lived in Cambodia and Morocco and Tajikistan, is because I was seeking that which was most different from me so I could open up. And that's my next lesson. And that is your choice. Anyone can open your mind if you just get to know them. So, okay, when I talk about peace and love, my friends scoff and say, you are such a hippie. Just another label, but still, it's kind of true. Uh, there are obviously differences, all right? What I want is simply not to use labeling as a method of dealing with differences. So what other ways are there to deal with differences? There's quite a few, actually. Um, so I'm going to list a few, right? The first is um, simply to hate differences and want to eradicate them. That's the underlying reason beneath genocide and fascism, right? Uh, another one is the my way or the highway method. You know, the people who scream, get out of my country, or immigrants are ruining our cities, or go back to Bangladesh. That's the my way or the highway. There's um, assimilation, right? As long as you fit in, you're welcome to stay here. Just don't stand out. There's tolerance, which is I'm willing to tolerate these differences. It's like, be different if you must. There's nothing I can do about it. I'll tolerate it. Yeah? And there's pluralism. Pluralism is the method where embracing differences as a good thing is the choice. So it's like saying, when we put your best bits and my best bits together, the world becomes a better place. So there's a wonderful metaphor to describe this, right? There's the soup versus the salad metaphor. Um, the way I imagine these societies is like there's a big pot, and the different people in it are like different ingredients you toss into a pot, all right? And it's boiling, and you're stirring, and everything turns to mush. It's a melting pot. 
and you get a soup where each ingredient has given up its individual color and flavor and shape and become the same assimilation right soup is good everyone gets along i like soup it's fine but i really like salad okay so um a society that's like a tossed salad is where you you toss in all of these different ingredients and uh, you sort of mix them up with a dressing of human rights and values and each ingredient retains its individual color and flavor the crunchy green lettuce and the ripe red tomatoes adding to the beauty of society with its difference and there you have your pluralistic tossed salad society so i have completely stopped going ahead there is your soup and salad all right too soon um there's a wonderful um philosophy by Immanuel Kant he's an 18th century philosopher and he says um it's called the formula of humanity act in such a way that you always treat humanity whether in your own person or in the person of any other never simply as a means but always at the same time as an end the inherent human value of a person is the end we are not a means to progress or wealth or success or power we are not a means to making statements or furthering agendas humanity for its own sake instead we just slap labels on people's foreheads don't even look at humanity we're constantly judging we spend half our lives hating half the people that pass through hating one person's beard and another person's mustache hating an accent hating languages we hate foods and behaviors and customs and professions it's endless why not think he is so he is his choice his life his humanity has as much a right to be part of this world as yours or mine wouldn't the world be so much easier if we just used one label just human thank you